Let's add custom configs to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom configs to our mod. Now, this is actually fairly straightforward. The individual parts are not that crazy. There's a little bit of a caveat at the very end that I basically will want to show you. But first of all, let's start this. So in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new a package called config. And instead of there, we want two new classes. And one of them is going to be the following. First one is the tutorial mod client configs and then the second one is going to be the tutorial mod common configs so there you go those two are classes now i'll be copying over the contents of this they are actually fairly straightforward we're going to start with the client one uh, because i actually don't have any client configs in here i just wanted to show you you know how you can register it for the client we're going to just copy this over and you can see it's very straightforward, right? You can see we have two fields, a builder of forge config spec builder, basically equal to a new builder here, and then a forge config spec just without being, without initializing it. And then in the static scope, you can see we're basically pushing configs for tutorial mod. This is sort of going to be the headline of our custom config file. And then we can basically in between here, here, you know, here, define your configs. Now we're going to see this in the common one. I actually just don't have any example for a client one at the moment. And then you always want to call the pop right here and then just set the spec to equal builder.build. And that is pretty much all that you need. As I've said in the common one, we're basically going to see, you know, some custom values as well. So let's just do this as well. And you can see there we go. Once again, overall, when you really look at it, it's not actually that much. So this is the same, the static one is the same, the builder approach is the same, and the last one here are the same. The thing that has changed is now we have two static final forge config spec config values as fields, and you can see that they have a name, right? Citrine ore veins per chunk and citrine ore vein size. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it configurable on how much citrine ore spawns in the world. This is always something that's, you know, a good idea to basically put into your mod, make this configurable so that possible mod pack makers have the ability to adjust your, you know, the ratio of however many ores spawn, for example. And you can see what we do is we basically set this equal to builder.comment. This is going to be the actual comment here. And then we're calling on this the define method here. You can see this is the name of the variable and this is the default value. Now you can see here we're actually calling define in range, meaning that the default value is 9 but it also has a minimum and a maximum value, meaning that if, you know, someone in the configs were to do, you know, put this value below four or above 20, then it actually would not work. So this is basically the general idea here. You can then make it in a range so that, for example, you know, people can't just do, you know, 200, you know, citrine ore vein size, and then the entire world is just going to be citrine ore. It sometimes makes sense you know, just keep that in mind that you have that as well. We can also take a look at this for the sake of argument here. There are some other, you can see define, define in range, define in list. So you can basically have a certain list there, which, so you can define a list of acceptable values. You also have enums that you can define. I mean, as you can see, there's quite a few of them actually here. So highly suggest playing around with this once again and be open to experimentation. So we have defined these particular fields, but how do we actually register it? We have to register it first and then we can use them. So in our tutorial mod package, what we're just going to do is we're just going to go below here, below the gecko lib initialize, and then we're going to say mod loading context dot get dot register config. We're going to say type dot client first, making sure we choose the one from net microforge fml config mod config. Then we're going to say tutorial mod client configs dot spec. And then a file name, and this is very important. I usually, you know, choose my mod ID dash client dot toml. Make sure that this is a toml file and that in this case is called client. We can then just press control D to duplicate this line. I'm going to change this to common. This one to the tutorial mod common configs. You can see and then here also incredibly important that we change this to common as well so that there are two different toml files as you can see right one for the client and one for the common. Uh, uh, very important actually. So how are we going to use this? Well, we're going to use this in our mod configured features class, of course. So this is going to be the size. This is the vein size. So let's just do the following. We're just going to say uh, this is actually tutorial mod common configs dot citrine or vein size. This is the vein size. Yes, dot get. And that is it. This will then convert it into the actual integer. 
Either it's going to, you know, read this one, the default one, which is going to be generated in just a moment, or if this is changed, the config file has changed, then it's going to use the file that the user wrote. We're going to do the same thing in the place feature right here for the veins per chunk. So we're going to say, once again, tutorial mod common configs, this is the veins per chunk dot get. And let's actually just do it like this so that we can read it a little bit better and that should be fine. What's very important here, and this is the caveat that I wanted to mention, this is going to work no worries at all. There are some places where you can't really use this properly. So for, for example, at one place I am not 100% sure about, but I'm like 80% sure that it's not very much recommended is when you have configs in your registration stuff. So like, oh, I can I want to make it configurable how much this stacks. I'm not 100% sure that this works. What's also very important is that there are different types of configs, as you have clearly seen, right? There is the client, the common, and there actually should be the server one as well, which we don't have in this moment. But yeah, this is basically a distinction that has to be drawn. So the client obviously is everything on the client. So for example, if you have something like custom, if for example, you have something like a custom particles that you want to basically be configurable for in some way, shape or form, that would pretty much be almost always on the client, right? If there's anything on the client that it should be configurable, then that is basically where this happens. Common happens both on the client and the server. So both of them know about it. And then the server, basically it only happens on the server. So that is the general idea. It's similar to the client event right here, right? Where this always only happens on the client, all of this. And then this, right, the common one happens on both the client and the server. So both of them know about it. That's the general extent to this. I highly recommend like every time, just play around with this, be open to experimentation and just see what you can basically find. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly run the client, let Minecraft actually start. And then I will show you where the uh, config file actually generates because they generate in a very specific folder. And then we can change it, create a new world, and then basically just, you know, see that uh, we can, you know, manipulate the vein size and the, ve uh, the vein size and the veins per chunk in for our, you know, configured features for our citrine ore. So let's just let Minecraft start and then we can see the actual files. All right, Minecraft has started and we can immediately just quit the game and then we go into our run folder config and there we have it, tutorial mode client and tutorial mod common so the common is the interesting one you can see basically how this looks like this is just the you know how many citrine ore veins spawn per chunk seven in this case and then how many citrine ore spawn in you know one vein so let's just go 20 here and let's just go freaking crazy let's go like 15 here so we've just you know changed this actually let's let's go 15 15 that's going to be fine i think that this is going to be plenty and once again if we change this and then make a new world then in the new world we should get these numbers for the veins per chunk and the vein size as well so let's go into the game make a new world and let's see if we can find an abundance of citrine ore in the world. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft. And I mean, you can already clearly see that there are a lot of citrine ore veins. There's another one. There is another one. And you can also see the size is very much, you know, bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So that's pretty, you know, that's uh, quite the size. Let's go here. Let's look at this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So as you can clearly see, I mean, it, it clearly has worked. There is um, way more citrine than there was before. And, you know, the vein size is also, you know, definitely bigger than before, as you can see there. And there's more and there's more. Once again, I mean, the numbers are a thing that you can, of course, always play around with. But it's really cool to have this configurable, like I said, for mod pack makers. This might be really useful as well. And overall, it's also really cool to have this configurable. So that's pretty much how easy it is to add some configs. Minecraft. Right, that already concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and I will see you all in the next video. So, yeah.